Hey guys, John here. Today's pigments patch is called Iron Techno. Enjoy. But wait, there's more. If you go into the Sequencer tab and select Sequencer, I program in a sequence just in case you wanted to use it. So yeah, throw your hands up and I, I guess that's, I don't really know what they say for that. Anyway, let's get into the patch here. So we're gonna be using engine one, analog, engine two, wavetable, utility engine, and all the effects slots. So there's quite a lot going on for this one. So let's turn off the effects, let's turn off the sequencer, go to the synth page, turn off utility, turn off the second engine, and then let's look at the first one, analog, and it sounds like this. So with this one here, the first thing that we should notice is going to be this envelope here. The attack, 1 milliseconds, decay, 426 milliseconds, 0 sustain, release, 20 milliseconds, and the decay curve is at 3.52. And the attack curve is right in the middle at 0. So it pretty much goes away pretty quick, which is useful for ARPs and sequences. So for this first engine here, we didn't change any of the main course tuning at all. We're using all three oscillators. The first one is going to be a downward saw. This one's detuned by one octave or 12 semitones. Volume is all the way at zero. The second oscillator over here is up seven semitones. So we're creating that perfect fifth there, that kind of power chord kind of feel right there. It's going to be a square wave and the width is going to be 0.739 and volume is going to be negative 4.40. And then the third oscillator is going to be down one octave as well. And it's going to be an upward saw and it's gonna be at zero dB here. And the voices are gonna be two. We don't want too many to clutter the sound, but we still want a little bit extra to kind of give that stereo vibe here. Now the stereo is gonna be all the way at 100% and the detune is at 1.44%. This one is also going to filter number one, which is the MS-20, which we're gonna talk about the filters in just a moment. Moving on from the analog, let's go over to the wavetable and see what's going on here. So if we go to this 2D view right here, we can click this little button and we basically just have the saw wave right over here, but we're doing a couple different things to it here. So first thing, we didn't change any of the coarse tuning. The voices is gonna be two, the stereo 100% and the detune is 2.08. But we did change this phase transform. The skew is gonna be 0.492. The type is gonna be skew. And then the skew mod is 0.188. We're also using some wave folding and this is gonna be in a macro, which we're gonna talk about the macros in just a little bit and this is going to be by default at 1.54 and then the shape is going to be the sine wave and that's going to give us this type of sound here also going to filter number one and the engine volume is zero negative 0.199 or, ne or negative 0 0.199 excuse me Next up, we have the utility engine. So this one, we're gonna be using the first noise and then the sub oscillator here. So for this noise here, it's really just using mess. And this is more so to add texture. And this is something that we're sending to the first filter, this MS-20, to just to get a little bit more texture, more harmonics in there to kind of dirty up the signal. That kind of makes that filter work a little bit nicer. So also filter number one, and then the volume for this one is 3.24 dB. And then over here for the oscillator is basically just a sine wave down one octave and it's going direct out. So bypassing the filters and bypassing the effects. So just straight out of the box, we're getting that low end sine wave, which sounds like this. Very low, but it kind of all fits in the mix once everything's put together. So with that being said over here, let's turn on our engines here and let's take a look at the filters. So engine one, filter one, engine two, filter one, utility engine, filter one. So these are all basically going to the first filter. And you might be asking yourself, well, why do we have two filters, right? So if you look at the routing over here, the first filter is getting sent to the second. So all these engines are first going and getting processed by this first filter, then getting outputted from this one and going into the second filter and then getting processed by this one and then going to the effect. So basically the MS-20, my personal favorite filter, it's really good for dirty type of sounds or 303 kind of sequences. It just makes things really nasty sounding, especially with the resonance. It's just mind-boggling how much uh, how much I love this filter. 
So with that being said, this first filter here, this cutoff is going to be at 124 hertz, but it's also on a macro. So we should talk about this first one here. So the first macro is going to be cutoff, and you basically drag and drop this on this knob here, and then kind of turn it to where you want it to be. And this value all the way at the top is kind of the one you want to reach for, this macro, instead of touching this cutoff right over here, because it's already pre-programmed to work at this cutoff. And the same thing goes for the resonance too. So the resonance is going to be all the way to the bottom for the manual knob here, but then the modulation from macro number two is 0.76. So that's going to be 76% of this knob here. So pretty, pretty far up there. And I left it here by default, not all the way. You can go a little bit further. So if you check this out and you kind of go further up here, it's pretty crazy. I'll let you experiment with that in a little bit, but I kind of put a default back down here. It's at a more comfortable volume, but if you do want to go almost into self oscillation territory, be my guest. This is going to be the low pass 12, and it's going to be a little bit of keyboard tracking at 0.368. So now this filter comes out of here, and it goes into this second filter here. Now, this is a multi-mode, and I'm basically just using this notch 12 to kind of just cut out some of that low-end frequencies that I didn't really, that muddy nut muddy stuff because I kind of ran out of stuff here in the effects because I'm kind of using everything. So I kind of wanted to just notch out that filter right over here. So that's kind of the thought process behind that one. So the cutoff 138 hertz and the resonance 0.356. So that's basically the core sound of this uh, of this patch here. So now we dive into the effects. Let's turn these on. Let's turn off FXB and then let's look at number A. So first of all, we have an EQ. Now this is kind of just shaping the sound before it gets processed by everything else. So without the EQ. Sounds something like that. Now, if you turn the EQ on, we kind of want to get a little bit of that mid rangey kind of high endy stuff, those two peaks here, because it works really well once we put it into the multi band and then into the delay and so on and so forth. And then moving on, or actually, we should talk about these values before we move on here. So, this first one is going to be at 80.8 hertz, and we're pushing it by 4.13. The second one is going to be 861 hertz, pushing that at about 9.68 dB, so quite a lot. The third one is going to be at 2,129 hertz, and the peak is going to be, at, or the gain is going to be 8.53. And then for the high shelf over here, we're going to be at 4,271, and we're pushing that by 2.97 dB. Now, this kind of process here is not necessarily just typing in values or something like that. It's just kind of dragging these notes around and kind of figuring out where it sounds best. And then kind of it just lands where it lands because a lot of these moves are pretty insane, right? So almost 10 dB at 861 hertz, pretty wild. But yeah, that's kind of the, uh, the thought process. From there, we go into a multiband and it does that to it. So we kind of want to get that brittleness kind of sound too. So... A lot of this is very experimental as far as just moving slightly these bars up and down, compressing them, bringing them down, expanding them a little bit, so on and so forth, but also keeping this amount at 100% because by default, it's going to come at 50-50. So once we get that brittle kind of like almost annoying type of sound, then we send that through a delay. Now this time is going to be 1 over 8, the find 0 feedback 0.352, stereo spread 0 0.040, high pass 20, low pass 7,880. 8 hertz. Now for the effects here, this dry weight, you'll notice it's going to be at zero, but we are modulating this with macro number four, which is the effects, which we're going to get to in a little bit. So the full value is going to be 20%. From there, we go to FXB. Now, we, now this first hits a distortion here. Let's turn this off here and here. And that softens it up just a little bit. And that's some extra character to that as well. It's going to be in germanium for the type here. The drive is going to be 22.7 dB, the dry wet at 12%. From there, we hit another delay. Now, this one is going to be a dotted eighth note. The fine is going to be zero, feedback uh, 0.520, stereo spread 0 0.040, high pass 20, low pass 11,878 hertz. And same deal here as before, this, this knob is going to be a zero, but it's modulated by macro number four, the effects by 0.31, so 31%. And then we hit up reverb at the very end. Pre-delay, 20 milliseconds, size 1, decay 0 0.460, stereo width 0 0.5, high pass 200, low pass 4,342 hertz, and the damping is 0 0.600. 
And again, same thing with the dry wet knob, it's gonna be zero, but then we modulate this by macro four at 0 0.40, so 40%. So moving on from there, let's talk about the sequencer here. So let's turn this on here and let's go to our arpeggio. So this one's kind of interesting because we basically have this going downwards for the sound, right? If we play a chord. Now the velocity is unchanged here. The octaves are also unchanged, but for the trig probability on, on step number five, this is completely zero. And then also step number 13 is completely zero. But the interesting spot is these gate lengths are pretty much around average. I did kind of move them slightly just to have a little variation, but the really important ones are gonna be the ones right before this trig probability is down. So number five, it's down, right? But number four, we're gonna have the gate length for that step a little bit longer, so it kind of holds the note while number five doesn't play. So there's not such a big hole in the sequence. And the same goes for step number 13. This trick probability is zero, so this step won't play. But the one previous, number 12, will play, but it's gonna be 189 for the length of that step. And then we have this rate over here at 1 over 16. The swing is going to be at 50%. I tried to change that earlier, but I didn't really like the sound, how it came out. So it's going to be at 50 as it comes for default here. Now you might notice that this regen is on here at a, at a half bar. And that was because when I was doing this sequence here, I kind of went through a lot of different repetitions of randomizing the sequence until I found one I kind of liked and then kind of mod or modified it from there to come up with this type of sequence here. And I find a lot of the things with sequences, sometimes less note changes are better because sometimes when you do the randomize, it throws notes everywhere. So once there's something kind of cool poking out, then find the stuff that's not really as cool and kind of just bring it down to the root note and you'll probably get a better sound that way. So that's pretty much it for this patch. The last thing that we need to talk about is gonna be this tone over here. So if we go back to our synth here, this is gonna be the third macro, number three, and we click this, and this is gonna be the wavetable uh, PM amount. So let's go to the second engine over here and we can always see where it is by this dot over here, right? So if we click this away and we're like, where do we modulate this at? We click number three and then we can see that this dot is located right over here. And then we can see that these two knobs here are going to be affected by this tone knob. So we're adding some phase modulation here and then we're also adding some extra wave folding. And if we close these, we can hover over this phase mod. See it's macro number three, which is tone, which is the right one. And that's at 0.85. So 85% of this knob. And then also for the wave folding at 0.75. So 75% in addition to this value that we have right over here. So 1.58, so pretty much goes almost all the way. So yeah, interesting way to think about that. So yeah, either if you want to play with a sequencer or with an arpeggio, that's totally up to you. So yeah, hopefully you like this patch and you learned something from it. If you like the video, then yeah, give it a like. Let me know if you uh, like this patch because this one took a little bit longer to make than the other ones. If you want to get the patch for free, there's a link in the video description below and it can be yours. So thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one.